Yeah. Right now. In terms you saw, of weight, you saw the you... belt today. What did you think of it? Well, I want to I match my brother and Varius. <laughs> so they, they had the IBF. My brother had the IBF. You never had one? Uh, Varius had the IBF at 154. So that's, uh, I want to add the IBF to the collection. And maybe we can all take a picture showing off the same belt. In terms of going up to 47, uh, your frame and stuff sure. like that, how do you think? Things will change in camp to yeah. fill out to that frame, and is that a legitimate concern about your size going into that uh, weight division? Or I'm not looking at 47 right away. Like I said, I would probably have to, but that may be a, you know another year or, or who knows. If I did want to get at 47, of course, there's going to be some changes in the training, you know, to to uh, fill me in, in, in into that division. Um, but I also have to fight smart. I, I'm not gonna be looking for 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 the knockout maybe as much because I may not be able to to secure a knockout. So I'm gonna have to maybe make some changes, maybe fight smarter. But you know those are the fights that will be on a pay per view scale, and and I think the fight fans will be very excited to see me with those welterweights. But we just gotta take the right steps at the right time. You called out Mikey Gar. Oh, sorry, you called out Miguel Cotto on Twitter a few times. Would you still be willing to go to 54 for the right fight? And could you be a sixth division I, champ? I was I was willing to go to 154 for Cotto, um, but I, I don't see any any interest anymore at 154. I mean, my division is obviously lightweight and super lightweight right now, but 154 was interesting enough for Cotto and exciting for Cotto. The name Cotto carried more weight than than the division or the title, the championship belt for me. I don't think I'll be going to 54 anytime soon. Maybe way, you know, years from now, you know, if, if I'm big enough or the right fight at that time, I don't see myself there right now. Do you see Lipinets as a vulnerable guy, given your style? So a lot of people uh, online are saying that it's going to be a fight where it's going to showcase you. Uh, you could potentially get a knockout. Even Lipinets is kind of seen those tweets and, and tweeted out like, hey, I'm not just going to give this belt over to Mikey, but do you see it kind of going your way like that because uh, of his uh, defense and the way he's come out a little bit damaged in the other fights? Look, um, I've seen Lipinets on, on, on two occasions, and um, I, don't, I don't see it the way most fans or, 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 or most critics, media, you know, are, are writing. I think uh, Lipinets is actually a very, very dangerous fight for me. Um, yep. When I consider the size advantages, the, the the strength advantage that he has, those are, are you know concerns that I, I can't ignore. And um, he, when he lets his hands go, I mean, he's dangerous. I gotta be careful. Now, do I still believe I have more skills to beat him and overcome those? Yes, I do. I think my boxing skills are, are greater than, than, than he has, and that's why I feel I'm a win. But I mean, inside of the ring, anything can happen. I mean, you you got surprises all the time. You know, you, you get these young guys or or young fighters fighting, you know, top contenders or, or world champions, and they give you the surprise. You know, so you just you just can't can you know go by what someone is riding because most most likely they've never stepped foot inside the ring. Two more questions, guys. You were asked earlier about you know Aaron whether or not he would like to check when you near you. Uh, any concern that this is more than just um, you know strategy on their part about keeping their guy and you know uh, not knocked out or whatever that that there might be some personal stuff kind of left over from, from the litigation. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's so much personal stuff right now. I mean, like he mentioned himself, you know. It's, it's in a, you're in a business, you said something like, you don't stay in this business holding grudges or something like that. So, I think they have an agenda for Lomachenko. They have a game plan on how to guide his career. And they're taking him on different fights. Um, and I don't think uh, Mikey Garcia is anywhere near those, uh, those, those uh, plans. But, but for the right money, for the right business, I'm sure he's willing to work. Last question, guys. What do you tell your fans right now? Because their tickets go on sale Monday? Well, tickets tickets uh, are, are going to go on sale, and they're, they're very reasonably priced. I think it's, it's a great show, great fight, so make sure they, uh, they can come out and support. If uh, they can't uh, come out, make sure they watch on Showtime, because um, I'm prepared to give everybody a great show and uh, just give the fans another side of Mikey Garcia. Mikey, what do you think about Thank you, guys. Oh, the size advantage was just too, too great. 
Lomachenko uh, had the, the size advantage and really did what he had to do. And he himself doesn't give himself that much credit for that reason. I was a little disappointed in ringing down because I thought he was going to be able to perform better, but you know it was, it was just too much for him. Thanks, guys. That's yeah, a wrap, what do you make guys. of the hand? Oh, uh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Anyone who needs Sergey? He said he, said he hurt his hand, so he, said he broke Sergei? it, and then it's bruised. Yeah, bruised. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>